This is Joyce Latimer at Virginia Tech, and we're going to wrap up today with some tips on using Configure on perennial liners. It is about that time of the year. So we've talked in the past about chemical approaches to branching, and again, our goal is to improve plant architecture. We want to eliminate the need for pinching because it is labor-intensive and it delays, delays growth and rebloom. We want to release that apical dominance, and we want to increase the branching, improve the quality of the plant, and wow, it would be really nice if we could finish those plants more quickly. So let's start our applications early. We want to increase branching. That's the, the main reason we're using Configure. Some of our earliest work found that Echinacea was very responsive to, to Configure. It actually, what we called, increased the capacity of the plant to branch. And what that means is that when the plants are finished, the treated plant still has more branches than a control plant. It actually increases the capacity of the plant to branch. That's ideal. We also want to increase marketability. This Garus is cute pink was another one where we increased the capacity of the plant to branch, but we got the benefit of increasing the number of shoots and, and branches, but also the number of flowers on those branches. So we have a much more full pot, much better marketability with this plant than with our control plant. We also would love to see quicker finish. If we could turn the plants around quicker in the greenhouse, we can, of course, save bench space, and that saves money. So Pinsman was a good one that showed us that we could, with a very small increase in the number of branches, we only got two more branches. But look how much more leaves, how much better pot fill we got with a single treatment of Configure. So we got increased branching, we got more better marketability, and quicker finish. So if we're talking about Configure, this is a 6BA product, a synthetic um, cytokinin, promotes cell division. It's important to know that it stimulates but does not cause branching or flowering. So we have to operate on windows of opportunity, windows when the, the plant is in active growth and is, is ready to branch in a physiological and developmental state where it can branch. It has to have enough plant material there. It has to have some nodes. It has to be physically able to branch. We also need to know that it is, has a very short period of activity in the plant, roughly two weeks, which also means that, that uh, multiple applications may be very beneficial if we can manage that in our crop cycle. We also know that this is not, this chemical is not actively transported throughout the plant, so complete spray coverage is required to get good branching on this plant. So this is what we're working with, working with Configure. What if we start on the liner stage? And I know some of you have seen this before because this is some of Mayor Grossman's work from her masters, but there's still really good examples for the tips I want to give you today. So this was where Mary looked at, gosh, I think about 20 different crops. She uh, rooted the liners herself, and we made the treatments very early. And we'll talk about this, too. We made the treatments when the roots were just reaching all four sides of the plug. So they were not fully rooted at the time we made these applications. And again, what we were looking for was increased branching. This is Veronica. You see that we got a lot of increase in branching. We went from basically a little more than two to over nine with any of our configured treatments, whether it was 300 or 600 parts per million. We also did not get a, an improvement in the finished plants. When we grew these out, measured them at eight weeks after initial treatment, there were no differences between the control and the treated plants. So we did not increase the capacity of these plants to branch. Another thing I want you to note is most of our increase in branching with Configure comes low in the plant, which is very convenient if you want to combine pinching or shearing with a Configure treatment. You could come back and cut the tops off of these, these liners and still have a very nicely branched plant that to pot up. So we have increased branching. Siskiyou Pink, as I mentioned, was also a very good brancher. We had increase in branches and leaders. This is at four weeks after treatment. I want you to look at the root systems. I told you we treated these very early in production, in liner production. 
and these are the finished liners. You can see we really have no effect on root. You can't see an effect. We measured the root joy weight, and there was no difference. And again, in like the picture I showed you earlier, with Cisco Pink, we do have an increase in the finished plants in our branches and leaders. So we increase the branch, and we increase the capacity to branch. I'm a cheerleader. But we also have crops that we found a significant reduction in root growth with that early application of Configure. This leucanthemum, yes, we increased the branches with all of our treatments, 100% increase, but we reduced the root dry weight significantly. However, when we grew these out at eight weeks after the initial treatment, there were no differences in the branches of the growth. We did not measure root growth at that time, but that reduction in root growth did not affect the shoot growth or the performance of those plants. We had a similar response with Agastache. You can look at those, you can still see we have less root development, with, especially with the higher rate of Configure. But we, this one didn't give us quite as much of an increase in branching, a 40% increase in branching, but a significant reduction in root dry weight. At eight weeks after, after we've grown these out, you can see again that we have no differences in the, in the plants. There were no differences in, in branching and growth. So that root dry weight reduction of the liners was not enough to affect shoot growth. So that's good. Again, what we're looking for is a persistent effect. And lavender was another one that gave us just a great effect with the liner treatments. We had an increase in branches, we had an increase in leaders, and an increase in shoot dry weight. We basically had a much greater sized plug. When the finished plants at eight weeks after treatment, we still had an increase in branching and an increase in leaders. And I know you can't really tell that there, but I can tell you that our lab girls counted every one of those and they were, there were more of them there. So I think a little more size on them, you might see that difference. But we like to see an increased capacity with, these, with the configure treatment. What we did learn with uh, some of Mara's later studies was the value of multiple applications. This was one crop out of a series of crops that she used with multiple applications, and she's published that work. At the end of the liner stage, the 600 part per million configure treatment increased the number of branches six times. It was six times more branches on that liner than there were on the control. If we potted those up and grew them out, grew very fast, it's six weeks after, there was no difference in the, the number of, of branches on the control versus the configure treated plant. That was one single application in the liner stage we had no effect on the finished plant. We made a second application about five days after we transplanted the liners into the pot. We ended up with two and a half times the number of branches with a second treatment. So this, the multiple applications is definitely recommended, and we'll talk about some of the warnings about that. But yes, multiple applications should be on your, your protocol for using Configure. Now, I want to talk just a minute, and I know this is a little bit out of place, but I'm going to do it because it was using Configure. This applies to a lot of your plant growth regulators. You know that drying conditions affect the uptake of your PGRs. Well, I want to show you how much so, and hopefully you'll think about this when you make these applications. This was a study we did. We were looking at a range of rates. We went really high, 1,200 parts per million configure. I would never recommend this for your perennials, but this it was part of a research study we went that high. At the time of application, our relative humidity ranged between 38, dropping during the time down to 32%, and our temperature was 80 to 85. This was in April, and again, 1,200 parts per million configure. We had no phyto. This is a picture of the plants at three weeks after treatment. We had good branching, beautiful plants. Now look at plants that we treated in July. In July, our relative humidity was 92%. Our temperature was lower. It was only 72 degrees. But look at the phyto we have at one week after application with 900 parts per million configure. We had significant phyto with lower rates and very much more quickly. Now, 
is what this gets back to is the drying conditions. In the April application of that low humidity, the configure dried very quickly, so there was very little uptake. Whereas in the, the summertime, with a higher relative humidity, the leaves stayed wetter. We had a significant amount of uptake. Now, I've talked to my growers about this, and they all say, Joyce, I can't, I can't use that information. And I know that you can't choose to make your applications at any specific relative humidity. But what I would suggest is that you watch for extremes. You avoid making applications at extremes, of your, especially your relative humidity. I think that a lot of the times when you find that a PGR application did not work, it had to do with the uptake of that material, probably the relative humidity during the time you made the application. So if it didn't work, it's more likely that it wasn't taken up than the fact that it doesn't work on that crop anymore. That's not logical. So just watch for and try to avoid any of the extremes of conditions when you're making these applications. And again, this is not just configured. This is any of the PGRs or any product that you want to be taken up by the plant as a foliar application. So just a, a caveat again, I bring it up because it was configured, add it to your tips on using all of your PGRs. So just in summary, keys to use in configure, it does generally affect and improve the branching if we use it during liner production. With some of the subsequent work now, we really do recommend you wait till the plants are fully rooted, so you really avoid any issues with root um, reductions in root growth. But we have found, like I said, that the, these moderate decreases in root growth didn't affect the finished plant quality. So keep that in mind. My, you know, if you're selling the liners, your, your customers may not be very happy with that. So make it a little bit later in the production. It does have a short-term activity in crops, so we do recommend multiple applications. Make sure you give it at two-week intervals. Second application should be shortly after transplanting. If you're not growing your own liners, I would recommend that you treat your liners as long as they're actively growing. Treat the liners when they come in and then again two weeks later so that you get that multiple applications early in the production cycle so you can benefit from those increased branching. Remember, complete spray coverage is required. You can add surfactants to configure. Use one that is safe and labeled for your product, for your crop, but yeah, that is another way if you have any concern about that. We've noted a couple of crops that consistently show Fido. One of those is Aster. We've used several different cultivars now and find that the configure, even at low rates at 300 parts per million or less, will burn the tips back. And it it's really is a, a chemical pinching. But they don't seem to grow out of it very well. So I really don't recommend using configure on Aster. We also don't recommend it on Gallardia. I didn't put that one on here. Gallardia, even a liner application, does give us a significant delay in flowering. So that's another one we wouldn't recommend using it on. So we do have several uh, presentations on our website. If you want to see some of the presentations that Mary has given, some others that I've given, that show more of the crops we've worked with in more detail, feel free to check those out and you have that on your handout.